take um, another minute or so. We have quite a few people online, um, but we're expecting even more. So while we're doing that, I'm just going to show you a, um, a slide with some tips about audio. Um, it looks like some of you have dialed in using your computer um, for audio and then some of you with your phone. In a few seconds we'll do some introductions and that will give us an opportunity to test out everyone's audio connection. Um, but for now we'll just let you um, review this information and um, we'll get started in just another minute. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and jump in. Again, um, thank you for joining us today for our first PLC webinar. This will give you a, just a quick overview of our agenda. We have a lot of um, information and um, activities that we want to share with you today. We'll start out with some introductions, as I mentioned. Um, we'll also give you a quick overview of, of the professional learning communities, the um, the learning goals or, or the activities that we'll be planning on for the year, um, as well as some webinar participation tips, any troubleshooting with getting online and access to the, to the webinars, how to use the control panel and so forth. Um, then we'll reveal the results of the survey that you all took um, prior to our start of the, of the PLC webinars, and then really dive into the meat of our discussion today with curriculum frameworks and unit plans, and then some, some sample lesson plans. And we'll hear from some of you about the work that you're doing in your centers um, related to building strong curricula. So with that, why don't we take a few minutes um, to introduce ourselves. Again, I'm Jennifer Grams. I'm with the Meter Consulting Group. And um, some of you who participated on last year's PLC webinars might recognize my voice. Um, I'm happy to be back with you and, and happy to have those of you who are, are new as well as our returning participants. I'm going to turn the microphone over to my colleague, Matt Fleck, let him introduce himself, and then um, We'll go around the table and let each of you um, introduce yourselves as well. So Matt, go ahead. Hey, thanks Jennifer. Good morning everyone. I hope you can hear me all right. It's always different in a webinar to figure out um, all the different pieces. It's just a little bit different. Some of you are very familiar with it, so uh, uh, maybe you can help us out as we go. Again, we are going to ask you to do some introductions in just a moment. We'll um, unmic your phone or your microphone with whichever way you're doing it, and we'll ask you to just share your name, your school name, and what you teach there at your school or what other role you might have at the school. I am the former CTE state director in Indiana. I've worked with CTE in, in the state of Indiana for about 18 years. Also worked quite a bit with um, not only automotive teachers, but also school counselors in and around the state and in, in other parts of the country. So uh, I don't know exactly how things work. In Pennsylvania, I've been doing a lot of research there and uh, traveling around the state, so I'll be anxious to hear your comments today. Okay, so this is the tricky part. I'm going to read your name, so you have to listen closely, and then I'm going to unmic your or unmute your microphone, and you'll just give us your name, again the school name, and your um, what you teach or your role there at the school. And Barry, I'm going to start with you. If I can, Barry Kircher, I'm going to unmic your or unmute your microphone. Can you say hello? Hello, my, my name is Barry Kircher. I'm at Dolphin County Technical School in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I teach automotive technology. Fantastic. It worked great. Thanks, Barry. Uh, how about Ben Wenzel? Ben, you there? Ben, you're there. I can't hear you. So, Ben, we will come back to you if we can. Uh, how about Dan Schumann? Dan, are you uh, able to give us an audio check here? And it looks like you've got a comment here, maybe. So if you're able to share with us, we'll try to come back to you. How about Dave? Oh, a little loud. Dave, are you there? 
gave this away. Okay. How about uh, Don? Is it Costner? Don, is that your last name, Costner? Costner? It worked great the first one. See, this is always how that happens. Don, are you there? Can you can you hear me? How about Gerald? Uh, Jared? Jared, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Great. Yeah. Go right ahead. All right. I'm Jared Camo. I'm an automotive instructor at Cumberland Perry Area Vocational Technical School in Mechanicsburg. Great. We're fine. Thanks, Jared. Uh, Jason Jones. Jason, are you there? Jason, can you hear me? Okay. We'll come back to Jason. How about Jean? Jean Moylan? Hi. This is Jean Moylan. I'm a math teacher at TCHS Pickering. Math teacher, great. Well, thank you for joining us. You'll, you'll give us some great insight as we go along here with math, with math integration. We have several questions about that. How about Jeff? Jeff Schmel? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Jeff Schmel from the Berks Career Technology Center, and I teach automotive technology. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Jim Schumann. Jim there? Dan Schumann Hello. there, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hello. Yourself. I'm Jim Schumann from Indiana County Technology Center. I teach automotive technology. Fantastic. All right. And it uh, looks like Jason got back to me and said he doesn't have a microphone, so sorry about that, Jason. We'll just let you be a, you can participate in the uh, question box. Any questions, you already learned how to do that. So that's good. John Dietrich, are you there? How you doing? My name is John Dietrich. I'm from Burke's Career and Technology Center East Campus, and I'm an automotive instructor. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, some of you know John Pulver. Uh, John, do you have a mic to introduce yourself this morning? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Good morning, everyone. Uh, John Pulver with the Association for Career and Technical Administrators. You have an important role, John. You want to elaborate on that just briefly? Sure. We're working with Meter Consulting, and uh, I do the Special Projects Consultant. Uh, so I work with, for PACTA with all of the professional development, um, and we're working. Uh, your PLC today is uh, working in conjunction, partnership, with the um, Inspired Leadership Program for Curriculum Leadership. So uh, hopefully some of our uh, participants were able to join us this morning. Uh, and that would be your directors, the administrative executive directors uh, from your schools. So thank you for having, uh, letting partner with you and uh, be a part of this. Great. Thanks, John. We appreciate it, too. Um, I know this takes a little while, but it's great to hear from everyone. Kathleen uh, Houghton. Kathleen, are you with us? Can you hear me? We can. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm Kathy Houghton, um, Technical College High School. I am in the Pennox Bridge campus. I am also a math coach and work closely with Jeannie Moylan. Fantastic. That's great. Good deal. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, Leanne, are you with us? Leanne Ortz, looks like. Maybe you can't hear us. Mike uh, Bernadine, or Bernadine, are you yes. with us, Mike? Yeah. Great. Uh, Mike Bernadine, Lehigh Career Technical Institute, uh, automotive instructor. Fantastic. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Paul. Paul, you'll have to spell, you have to pronounce your last name for me. Hello? What? I don't know if Paul has a microphone or not. Okay. How about Paul? Paul Andre? Pete? Pete Holland, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good. We can hear you. Pete. Go ahead and introduce yourself. This is Pete Holland. I teach automotive technology at Woodsburg Area Career Technical Center. And also with me is... Uh, Bob Carey. Yeah, hold on one sec. Uh, hello. Uh, Bob Carey, also wilkes Bear Area Career Tech Center, Automotive Technology. Hey, and Bob, thank you very much. Glad you could join us. Excuse me. Um, uh, Matt, this is yeah. Jennifer. Can I interrupt for just a second? Um, thank you for mentioning um, that you all were sharing a connection. If we have anyone else who is sharing, if you could enter um, your names into the questions box, that way we can make sure that that we um, list you on the attendance list because only the person who signed in's name appears. Thank you. 
question. For, sounds like you have a dog that wants your attention. Yes, I'm sorry. That's my assistant. Uh, Rich, um, I need uh, to... Ross, are you with us, Richard? No, it's okay. How about Rob, Rob Porter? Okay. Uh, Roy, Morgan, are you with us? Yeah, can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, Roy Morgan. I'm from the Kerr Institute of Technology. I'm an automotive instructor. I'm one of two. Normally, my partner Stan is with him in Tulsky, but we're having our state evaluation today, so somebody has to stay back in the shop and look back. <laughs> somebody has to do the dirty work. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks, Roy. Appreciate that. I know several of you, if you um, aren't, don't have a microphone, you're introducing yourself in the question box. If you don't know where that is, it's on the right-hand side of your screen. Just go to the question box and open it up, and you'll see comments from several other people. Sam Morocco, are you with us, Sam? Uh, yes, I am. I'm Great. Sam Morocco from the uh, Reading Muhlenberg Career and Technology Center in uh, Reading, PA. Fantastic. Thanks, Sam. And uh, Bill Forsyth. Bill, are you with us? We may have had a few others come online as we went. Uh, uh, Andy uh, Watt is going to be one of our presenters to, today. Andrew, you want to say welcome or hello? Hopefully we'll be able to hear you. We want to fix that. Andy, I unmuted your, or unmuted your microphone. If you can hear me, if you can say hello. If not, we'll, um, we'll figure out a way to get your microphone to work. Marcia Welsh. Yeah, Are, you, Are there? you there? Now we can hear you. Okay, Andy Watt from uh, Jeff Tech in Rennesville. And I have Great. with me Marsha Welsh, our director. Fantastic. Good. I'm glad we can hear you since we'll want to hear more from you later on. Fantastic. Thank you both for being with us. So what we, what we plan to do is uh, keep your microphones muted just so there's not too much excessive noise. But any time that you want to ask a question by microphone, it's always better to do it by microphone, we think, or by your, your phone either way. Um, you can either, up on the right-hand side of your screen, you should have a little thing that shows a picture of a hand. If you don't have that, I apologize, but most of you should have a little picture of a hand. And if you click on that, it raises your hand. And we'll look for your hand raise and, and unmute your microphone. You can also enter a question into the question box um, there. That's down a little bit lower on the right-hand side. And uh, just say you want to make a comment, and we'll unmute your microphone. And thank you all for introducing yourself. Jennifer, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, great. Um, just looking at that question box, looks like we had a question come in. Will you be sending out a list of all the members? Yes, we will do that um, in our follow-up email to today's session, send you the, the names and contact information for your colleagues who are participating in the PLC so that you'll have an opportunity to get to know each other and to contact each other offline if you choose to do so. Um, also looks like Jim Schumann wanted us to see if we could get um, audio connected with him. So Jim, I'm going to unmute you and go ahead, test out your microphone, please. Jim, we're not hearing you. Um, if you are talking, um, you might want to check your settings on your computer. Also, Jennifer, we have a hand raised from Ben Wenzel. I'm just going to go ahead and unmute him. Ben, okay. can you hear us? Then you had your hand raised. We've unmuted your microphone. Can you, I don't know if you can hear us or if you can speak or not. Okay, so Ben, we may have to, we have to use the question box to uh, enter a question there. We'll come back to you. Okay. Well, well, we'll do our best to sort through the, um, the audio issues. Um, if you want to send um, a note to the, to the question box um, about your audio, I'll do my best to troubleshoot with you while, while our um, webinar is getting underway. So we will um, see what we can, what we can um, work out with that respect. So great. Well, it's, it's great to hear from everybody. And um, as Matt said, I know that takes a few minutes, but um, one, of the, one of the objectives of these PLC webinars is to build a sense of community and to um, make connections among the instructors of, of the different discipline groups. So we hope that that's you know, part of what, what you'll get out of our, what uh, you'll get out of this experience.
So I'm not going to spend too much time going over this information, but I did want to give just a quick overview of the professional learning communities for this year. Um, similar to last year, the Bureau of Career and Technical Education identified three groups, three discipline areas that they wanted us to um, create the professional learning community groups. So those, as you're aware, automotive technology, carpentry, and cosmetology are the other groups. Um, you'll be meeting six times via webinar, plus at the June um, PAC Tech conference that will be coming up this, this summer, there will be an in-person uh, wrap-up meeting. And our focus this year is going to be on two, um, two areas, the first being numeracy integration, and then the second on skill development lessons and activities. And so the, the topics or the themes for the webinar sessions will sort of flip back and forth between those two areas. So for today, our focus is on the model lessons area. Um, would you please raise your hand if you received a copy of the PLC newsletter via email? Uh, it was sent out approximately a week ago. Please click on the raise your hand. Um, icon and for those of you who are new to our um, new to our system go to webinar on your right hand screen there's a control panel and you'll, you should hopefully see a little hand it looks like a high five sign okay so it look, looks like about half of you had a chance to see that newsletter. That's going to be our, our primary way of sharing information with the PLC participants. Um, each month we'll send that out and it will include any um, summaries of activities that we've done as well as the registration info for the upcoming webinar. So if you did not receive that via email, Please, um, please let us know because we want to make sure that we have your, your email correct. In, that, in the orientation newsletter, which was sent out last week, it included um, these learning goals, which I'm not going to read through, but just to give, we just want to show them up here briefly to give you a sense of the different goals and activities that we're going to be undertaking in the, in the PLCs this year so that you have a sense of what, what the... Um, what the content will be and, and what you will hopefully take away from your participation. I also wanted to just quickly touch on a couple FAQs and this um, cartoon on here struck my funny bone last night when I was finishing this up. Um, I have young children and this basically happens every night at our dinner table. But um, a couple questions that folks have asked, will the content be the same for all the webinars? Um, no, there, each webinar will be unique. So, um, you know, we strongly encourage you if you're able to attend all of them to do so. Um, we'll also be recording the webinars and be making them available uh, online for you to review if by chance you miss one or if there's something that you want to follow up on. But um, the content, each, each webinar will be, will be different. If you can't attend all the webinars, we certainly understand things come up. Um, if, you're, if you're able to attend all of them, that's great. Um, but again, if you can't and you want to follow up, we'll, we'll make them available in a recorded version for you. And then finally, how can I find out more information? The newsletter that I just referred to will be a great source of information. You're certainly welcome to always contact Matt or myself directly. And then also on the um, PDE SAS website, which we'll be talking about more later, um, is another source of information for you. Um, with that, I'm just going to show you quickly. This is the, the toolbar that I mentioned earlier, and I'm just going to click through here. There's a couple different things that you can do to enhance your participation. That red arrow that's highlighted, that allows you to shrink and, and expand the panel. You see how that works. There's a drop-down menu that um, you can get help or different information. This area that's highlighted here, this is your audio mode. So for those of you who were having some audio challenges, um, this is where we'll, 
we'll be focusing on trying to resolve those. Um, depending on what you've selected, whether you're using your telephone or microphone and speakers, this is where you would click on the appropriate option. And here's audio setup. If you're using your telephone, there's the number and the access code, and then there's also a PIN number. So that is an important piece if you are calling in via phone that will enable you to um, not only hear but also talk. And the questions box, which most of you have found, um, and certainly during the webinar, feel free to enter information in there. We'll do our best to field that during um, during the session, and anything that we can't, we'll, we'll certainly follow up with. And this is the raise your hand um, but button that we were talking about. So with that, um, Matt, for the sake of time, I think I'm going to turn things back over to you to really get into the, the content of our meeting. And then if we have time at the end of the session, we can come back to some of these other housekeeping items. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. Just switch this over to me. Okay. And it does look like we have a hand raised. Thank um, you all for your patience. I know it's a little bit uh, distracting when we start out. Just Okay, go ahead. Um, it looks like we have That's a hand Paul. raised, Paul. Right. Paul, we unmuted your mic. Do you need to want to say something? Can we hear you? Yeah, I, I guess you can hear me now, but I don't have my hand raised. That's what I know of. Okay. Well, it's good to hear you. Oh, no, here it is. Hand raised. Somebody. No, you're not raised. Good. There you go. All right. Now you know how to use that. Thank you. I'm going to mute you again, but anytime you want to speak, anybody, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll unmute your microphones. Please, this, this really is intended to be more of a conversation than a presentation, so really the important part is that you, you participate in presentation. Um, and I use the term automotive teachers uh, throughout the day today, but uh, I know that some of you do auto body, some of you do auto tech, and uh, so let me know if I need to correct that terminology. I thought it was general enough today that, that we just do that. Just kind of humorously, um, I saw this picture as I was looking through things this morning. I don't know if you can read the sign there. Uh, it says no trucks. <laughs> it looks like um, maybe a truck didn't agree with that particular sign. Uh, so part of what we're talking about today is messaging, how you message your information to your students, and uh, so that I thought was very appropriate. We are, uh, again, as Jennifer said, talking about in these webinars both math integration and model lessons. And today, of course, we're going to be focusing on model lessons. And after today, we'll have two more sessions that will focus on model lessons. As you can see, here's the schedule for all of the webinars that are coming up. Talking about model lessons again in January and in February, and talking also about how you deliver lessons, uh, the different ways you do that, maybe how you deal with behavior issues, uh, student engagement, motivation issues, how you do deal with students with IEPs or students with disabilities, and other issues that you might have in dealing with students and trying to get the curriculum and the lesson plans to them. So several other uh, sessions on model lessons and also integrated in there will be the math integration webinars. We can come back to that, but we'll also send you the schedule if you don't have it. Okay. Very briefly, just to give you an overview of the reason we're talking about model lessons and model curriculum today, uh, the Pennsylvania really has many multiple ways of holding students accountable. So part of your job is to help students reach uh, success in Common Core Standards, in your state assessments, the PSSA and Keystone exams, and then also those exams and assessments that are specific to CTE, those NACTI assessments. And my understanding is that some of these NACTI assessments are going to be changed slightly to accommodate uh, your standards and your task lists in Pennsylvania. So they may not have as close of alignment as you'd like right now, but certainly great assessments used in many, many parts of the country. And then the other reason is that because research says that using curriculum planning and instructional delivery, it will over time help to get students not only more engaged, but also learning the, the knowledge and skills they need in order to be successful in 
your area and in other areas that they're studying. So that's the reason behind what we're talking about today. I have to keep figuring out how to move to the next uh, slide on my, my presentation. I think I got it figured out. We did some introductions already, so I'm going to skip that. But we're going to come back and introduce our uh, two teacher uh, teachers that are going to be talking again today. We did ask several of you to fill out a survey beforehand. And just let me briefly go through some of the survey results of what you told us. I have to say, you are probably the most honest group that we have of all of the groups we're working with, because many of you said in, your, in the survey results that a lot of these questions you don't have uh, exceptional understanding about right now. That's OK. So again, I, I appreciate your honesty. We asked about if you could recognize what a quality lesson plan is. A lot of you said yes average to, to low understanding, so hopefully this webinar series will help out in that. When we talked about the next area, um, about helping students learn the content of a lesson plan, most of you said average to low. I understand that. That's not always a challenge when you're working with the students. Developing a quality curriculum, again, most of you said low. Uh, what is a curriculum, curriculum framework? We'll talk a little bit about that today. And maybe Marsha and some of your other administrators will, and curriculum directors will help help us understand that a little bit more. Teaching from a curriculum framework, kind of like knowing what a curriculum framework is, was was slow for most of you. We aren't today too much, but you're welcome to bring them up. We're not talking a lot about formative and summative assessments, but we will throughout the webinar series. And there's some mixed understanding of not only what those are, but how to use those types of assessments. We ask about your level of understanding of connecting your lesson plans with your course standards or expectations or task lists. Again, most of you said fairly average. We ask about integrating math, again, average to low. We are going to be talking about that in our next webinar series. So even though we have a couple of math specialists with us today, we'll be uh, welcome your comments today or, or down the road as well. Um, some of you said, or most of you actually said, sometimes you use written lesson plans. About six out of the, the ten respondents said that. Uh, most of you said that you use curriculum frameworks, even though we're not quite sure exactly what those are. Uh, written unit plans, maybe a little bit of misunderstanding about what those are. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Sometimes to mix formative assessments, sometimes is the answer. And then just some other things here about integrating math lessons, sometimes there. And some of your comments from our uh, survey. Uh, several of you said you're open to different strategies and information. See what works for you. That's what we want you to do, make it work for you. Several of you said you were first year teachers. And you didn't mind getting some help on lesson planning. And then uh, at least one of you mentioned the, the difficulty in teaching not only large numbers, but also large numbers when you have a lot of students with disabilities. So this particular teacher, uh, 20, 20 students, 10 of them have IEPs. And it certainly does make it a lot more challenging uh, when you have that kind of a situation. I, I know you may not have any, but I want to open it up just for um, comments. Anyone want to make any uh, particular comments about anything that we, we talked about here? want to raise your hand if you have a comment about that. I don't know if you wanted to talk about this, Rich, but I'm going to unmute Richard Ross. Did you want to still be Rich? Maybe just I had his hand up accidentally. Okay. You also have a comment that you want to put. You can either put it in the question box as we go along. We certainly welcome those questions as we go along, or raise your hand on the uh, audio box. Let's just go ahead and go forward, and then again, bring, bring your questions up as you go. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Marsha Welsh and Andy Watt. And uh, Andy and Marsha, I'm going to unmute your mics. And I'd, I'd like Marsha to talk first. Marsha, if you could introduce yourself and just explain your role there at Jeff Tech. And talk a little bit about, if you would, curriculum frameworks, unit planning, and, and lesson planning there at, at Jeff Tech. OK. Um, Marsha Welsh, I'm the administrative director here at Jeff Tech. Um, I, I just want to start by saying I'm just so thrilled to see uh, how far we've come in the 20 plus years that I've been in career and tech ed. When, when I started in career and tech ed, um, my first week on the job I was asked to write curriculum and, and knowing nothing about it. So 
Um, I was one of the strong voices uh, asking our state leadership to standardize our curriculum. Um, auto mechanics is actually one of the first to, to actually do that with bringing in the NATEF certification. So I'm very thrilled to see um, these PLCs coming together. I'm thrilled to see math teachers uh, joining in with us. Um, one of the philosophies that I always use when I have new teachers is I want to send them to another school where there's a good veteran teacher that can help them to, to get, because it's, it's really scary starting as a current tech ed teacher when you just leave the industry and come into education. So these are a, a great avenue for, for um, new teachers and veteran teachers to connect and, and learn from each other. Um, I, I have a quote from, I did a, someone said they were doing a state evaluation. I was on a team a few weeks ago, and the superintendent who greeted us uh, told us, we're always looking for ways to improve because our students deserve the best. And I think if we, if we use that philosophy and keep that in mind, that all of these other pieces will fit together, we have so many different components. We talk about unit plans and, and curriculum framework. and, and um, really for us, or for you now, uh, your NATEF and your program of study, you, you've pretty much got your curriculum framework for you, and now you've just got to put all the pieces together, and you're doing that as a team. Um, we need all of those components to the, the framework, the lesson plans, all of those pieces need to come together. and. My goal is that our students should never be surprised. They should never be surprised about uh, what it is they're learning. They should never be surprised about the grades they are earning because when the curriculum is, is laid out properly, they know exactly what the expectations are. They know what you as a teacher expect from them. They know what they need to do and to what standard. Uh, Andy and I have had some conversation here over um, the final outcome, and he said, well, most of mine are pass-fail. And I said, as an administrator, I don't really like that for every across the board because we can't just do pass-fail. Sometimes there has to be gradations. There has to be different levels of, of um, assessment. But in the auto mechanics field, where you're working on cars that uh, people are taking out on the highway, uh, a lot of your, a lot of the end products can, are life and death issues. So pass-fail is very different in auto mechanics than it would be, say, in computers. So you have to consider all of those things when you are putting your curriculum together and is this a life-death thing? If it is, it's pass-fail. If you don't pass it, that's it. You've got to go back to the drawing board. But we still go back to no surprises. If the kids know up front, hey, you either pass it or you fail it, that's exactly what they have that what they know what their goal is and they know yes I passed or no I did it and if they didn't pass it they know why they did it and hopefully if they did pass it they know why they passed too so I I just I, I'm I don't really want to get into a detail of it um because I wasn't sure exactly what you wanted but one of the things we talked about in our our um, learning um, professional inspired learning is Right now, we all have a culture of safety in our current tech programs. We know uh, you, certain shops you walk into, you don't go past two feet inside the door if you don't have safety glasses on. We also want to create a culture of curriculum, a culture of these are your expectations, this is what we want you to do, this is our goals before you leave here, and when your curriculum is all in line, you, you will have a culture of curriculum because Everybody will know exactly what they're here to learn. They'll know when they've learned it, and they know when they've succeeded. And that's. I'm going to turn it over to Andy because he has much more to Thanks, say. Thanks, Marcia. You're welcome. Okay, hey, Marcia and Andy, uh, thank you very much for that. Let me let me just talk very briefly. I'm not going to switch my microphone because several of you said it's not working very well. I apologize for that. Let me talk just a little bit about uh, curriculum planning. I got just a couple of slides then. And then, Andy, if you could come in and, and, uh, and, and expand it. Marsha, you could expand on this as well. Uh, let me just show you a little bit about what uh, PACTA and, and 
Pennsylvania Department of Education has talked about as far as curriculum frameworks. And, uh, and then maybe that will just foster some more discussion and some more information from those of you who are with us. Uh, the, the, the curriculum frameworks, uh, several of you have looked at the SAS website, uh, talks about the, the big ideas that students should understand should be part of a curriculum framework. That, that curriculum framework should include unit plans that have examples of, uh, of what's going to be taught. Uh, that, the, that the curriculum framework should talk about or cover at least in your mind what are some of the essential questions that students should be knowing or learning or asking in your, in your lesson or in your class during a period of time. Covering the standards, uh, the anchors for your assessments, and the and the eligible content. And I'm taking this from the curriculum, the information that's that's provided through the state. So some of this information may apply to you directly, or or may not. Uh, the units are are large groupings of several lesson plans, usually over a period of time. The big ideas are what are students learning over. Almost if you know that already, concepts about what students should understand through multiple lessons, and then sort of how to ask those essential questions. Competencies are, of course, your, your tasks that you have to complete in order for students to earn dual credits and also to meet the standards on your uh, NOCTI exams or assessments. Vocabulary is a good idea to include to cover the terms that students are going to be learning. And then in a, in a unit plan or a curriculum framework, it's always good to have uh, some sort of a time schedule about how long it's going to take. So let me just show you one that they provide. It's a sample unit plan. And some of you use something like this. Some of you may not. Uh, this is for uh, uh, frame machining. Uh, that's the topic at the top left. Uh, kind of explains what the unit topic is. And again, a unit is several lessons. It talks about the key learning components. And uh, these are sort of your standards or what students should know and be able to do by the time the units are all completed. It includes some essential questions. So this one's kind of one overall essential question for the whole thing. It includes concepts and then more detailed essential questions for each one of the units. So each one of these columns from left to right would be a separate uh, lesson plan. And if you look down a little bit more, you can see that the concept might be, for example, straightening steel. The, the essential questions is, uh, that students should be asking are what type of metals should you avoid heating, uh, how is the gauge on the frame machine used to relieve stress, etc. So what we're going to be asking you is, is this helpful? Is this something that you do now? Would it be helpful to do? Or is this something that you feel may not be as important to do or not? Here's a sampling unit plant that goes on with some sample vocabulary as well. So with these words, hydraulic, uh, simulations, uh, or simultaneous, sorry, vector, tensile, included in the, in the unit plan. So let me go back to, um, to our, our presenters today. Again, that's uh, uh, Andy and Marsha. And Andy, as soon as I can figure out what button to push, I will see. Maybe Jennifer, can you unmute uh, Andy's mic for me? So I don't seem to be able to find it now. There we go. Andy, let me, I think I, I can unmute your mic there. Do you want to, you or Marsha want to talk a little bit about unit planning and then talk a little bit more about lesson planning? Andy or Marsha? Okay. Um, I think it, I, I, I want to make sure I understand what you want here, but in general, uh, our school, we get lots of time to do this. So uh, maybe we do it a little bit different than other people. I'm not real sure. I'm just going to tell you how we do things here. Um, and then we can, I'm hoping people will chime in and tell me how they do it so that if somebody has a better idea, um, <clears throat> I'll be more than glad to do this. OK, um, I've been doing this for 23 years at this same school, uh, at Jeff Deck in Rennesville. We teach 9, 10, 11, and 12, and post-secondaries. So the outline you're seeing here is, is a lesson plan. Um, these actually come written, generally, from the textbook people. Um, I use my textbook. That's what my students have to use, and I use my textbook distinctly 
as a guideline here. These ones come less than plans. These are pretty bulk and pretty large. Um, I, I break this down, what you see here. Over, over a period of days sometimes, you know, it's, it seems like you could read this and do it in a few minutes, but with the uh, amount of students you have, uh, we all have this where, you know, my afternoon shop, uh, 14 of my 19 students have an IEP. Well, you, you're not going to zoom through this stuff at full speed uh, with certain students. So we, we kind of have to have a balance there. Um, these come written like this, then I build off of here. I do not use these. I make, you know, I read it, I make my own notes with it, and, and I work off of there. Um, Every school is different, I'm sure. People like to see these professionally written deals here, and they know when you get in the classroom, it's all almost a bust because it's who you're working with that day and what you're working on. Okay, so here is my general outline of my program. If you look, I've taken the eight areas of auto mechanics, how many hours they are, and this is the first page. This would be the left page of the two pages. You know, on the top of here, inspect and replace rear axle shaft and seal bearings. I don't know if you can get the second page on there um, quickly, but anyhow, it's, it's not easy to do. Okay, now this is what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to do lecture. I'm going to do demonstrations. Here's what I'm using, the textbook, uh, whatever I'm using, the manuals, Mitchells, whatever we happen to need that day. This is just a bulk list, and then here's how I'm going to test it on the right-hand side. Um, and that's general. You may do it with one group and you do all written tests, and the next group is not your best writers or your best readers. Uh, you may end up doing all that with oral testing and whatever. Okay, so I mean, the, my whole curriculum is laid out like this, and I use it for a baseline, but that's all. Now, as we go along this, this is the front page of a little booklet we designed. The inside of the booklet is no more than the, the, uh, the POS listings. And on there, now, as we do this, probably twice a grading quarter, thank you, um, twice a grading quarter, my students come to me with their checklist book, and, and we rotate through there and see what they've done and what they haven't done. Um, and it's not easy to say they've mastered some of this. So I use small sections of these as nine-week assignments. Uh, it's posted on the board. Uh, First-year students are doing this, this, and this. They're double flaring. They're doing uh, maybe torque wrench, uh, turning rotors, drums, stuff like that. Second-year students are doing something else. And there's only like maybe eight objectives for each grade level. Then we can bring that. I mark it off on my little calendar or, or sheet worksheet behind me on the board. As they do it, then we come back and we sit down about this real quick. And they just tell us, you know, oh, yeah, remember I did the tires on this car? Yes, and, and we know the car left and it was successful. So we can say that they've achieved certain things. Um, it's hard to keep up to. And everybody will come up with a new list. You know, this is pages long. This, the POS, of course, is eight categories. And there's hundreds and hundreds in there. And all of a sudden, you're two months down the road, and Billy says, I patched a tire. It's kind of hard. If you don't remember it, I don't give it to them. But this is just some stuff that I use, and I'm looking for ideas from other people. Um, if somebody's got an easier, quicker way to do this, I'm in. I'm just showing you guys stuff that I use. Um, 23 years, I've made 50 different ideas, probably. Uh, yeah, integrating the uh, the academic standards. NATEP has done that for you. Okay, they just brought that book out at a conference I was at at this week. First I saw it, and then my screen went black. Now it's back. Okay, first I saw it. Sorry about that. First that I saw this book was this week. When you open it up. It goes to each of the eight sections of the automotive and says what standards are met in there. They just did all my work for me. All I could do is match it up to the Pennsylvania numbers and plug them in there, uh, all in there. Now, our students are also in the process of doing stuff with iPads here. Um, 
technology, we spend lots of money on technology to get our students up and ahead of the, the normal. Um, we're doing iPads. Hopefully within two years, every student in this building will be carrying an iPad. I'm writing in notes here. When he said he needs help to figure out how to do um, a better job at tracking his tasks, and I said that's one thing we can use the iPad for. We can we can figure out a way to put that his little booklet into the iPad, and then he can mark it as he goes. When the when the students complete the task, he'll be able to put it in there. So we're just thinking here again. We're coming up with ideas as he's talking to you. Yeah. Good. Another reason for me to get an iPad from the school. I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, this stuff is a little easier to say today than it is with others. Okay. Um, you know, I'm I'm not real sure what else they want to cover here, but some of this stuff is a lot easier to say than it is to do. I can just give you my ideas and how I do things with these little task lists, and then I accumulate them in each nine weeks a couple times and put them onto their larger book. They're responsible for that book. Um, the goal is eventually is the back of their diploma will have the POS on it with the areas that they are uh, accomplished in, you know, that satisfactory, that they're they're ready to go in, marked off. So when they take this out for a job, they can turn the diploma over and say, look, I'm, I'm already, you know, been tested and marked off and breaks and whatever. Um, this is a long-term goal, and it, it doesn't quit every year. We just keep changing little things here and there. The iPad is new this year. It'd be great if we could put all the student stuff in there, and then I could just add it to their iPad while I'm watching them do a task. Actually, be able to tag in there and and mark them off right while they're doing it, and it'll be there for them forever. We're not real sure about where this will go, but I think it's heading in that direction. Um, we're very fortunate here. You're talking about math or whatever. We're a full-time comprehensive vote tech school. My math teacher is 100 feet down the hall from me if I have something I want to work with. Uh, and right now, we're, we're, we're struggling with students doing fractions. Adding fractions seems to be a real killer this, this year right off the bat with new students. So I've already talked to them, and they're already working on it in their classroom. Uh, if, if you got that, good for you. And if you don't, I kind of feel sorry for you trying to get back to home schools and then getting all six, seven, ten, whatever you have to agree and work with you is pretty tough. And so some students get better treatment than others, whereas in our school they all get the same treatment and, and our teachers work very hard with us to get this stuff to happen. Andy, Any we have a couple of, couple of questions, I think. I'm going to unmute uh, Rob Porter's mic. Uh, my, uh, Rob, I don't know if you can hear us or not, but if you have a question, could you go ahead and say it? If Rob has a mic, or if you accidentally hit the button. And I've got Rich Ross and Rob Porter both uh, raising their hands. I've got, I've muted both of you. Either one of you have a question? Okay, we can come back. How about Mike uh, Bernadine or Bernadine? Yeah, Mike, I've unmuted your mic. Go ahead. Yes, uh, Andy. Uh, the NATEF um, integration booklets are they available on the NATEF website? I. Saw it the first time on, on Thursday of last week at the Penn State Conference, uh, and she had hundreds of them there and said if you wanted them to get in touch with them. So apparently you can call them, and they'll, they'll send you out those. And who, John Palmer might have the answer to that. And I was curious who that was. Was that uh, uh, Trish Serator? She was a ASB? tall, blonde-haired lady. I'm, yeah. I'm not good with names. She was tall, blonde-haired. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay. John, do you happen to know? Uh, you, you know I, I do not, but I'll look for you. I could, Andy, what uh, session was it? On the NATEF? Yes, it was on NATEF session, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I think. Okay, I'll you know, get it. I'll, okay, I'll send it to Jennifer, and maybe we could post it and send it out to the group. Jen? Yep. Yeah, it sounds like it would be a useful uh, resource. That yeah. sounds great. Okay. Good. Okay, thank you for that. The rest of you, uh, other questions? Mike, did you, have, did you want to follow up with that? Any more questions? Uh, no, no the, I, the only other thing I have to add is that uh, there's, as per student tracking, uh, tracking their student performance, what we do at LCTI is uh, we have the Skyward, uh, like a 
a computer-based program throughout the school where we do attendance and uh, grading and all of that, we actually have our task list embedded in that program. And as they complete a task, we can go on daily, weekly, monthly. And as they complete, like for example, if I take you know four weeks or six weeks to do breaks, at the end of that six-week program, I'll take their PAL booklet, which is their performance assessment log, uh, and then I'll transfer all that information in there. And then at the end of the year, it, it's already done. So fantastic. Skyward's right. your student management system, like? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I have a question there. Fantastic. Uh, can the parents see that? Yes. Is that it, something it, someone? Yeah. At any point in time, it actually we can turn it on or off as per uh, quarter or September uh, semester. And then basically what happens is that the students as well as their parents have access to it. Great. Let's Fantastic. See, that's a better idea than mine already. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea. Other questions for Andy? We're not going to let you off the hook totally, Andy, but, but I wanted to at least allow some other folks to ask questions if they had some. So Andy, is this a, the, pretty much you take the format that's in some of your curriculum, your books or your other uh, curriculum materials, and you format it to fit you? Do you do you find it helpful to have some of those things written down? Well, first, you know, it, it, it's a great base. You know, it's kind of like anything. Um, you, my teacher when I went to school here a long time ago, okay. Um, he just kind of winged things off the top of his head, and sometimes he didn't give me all the important facts. So when I got out in industry, I thought I was pretty hot, and what I found out was I was only as good as what he gave me, and uh, he, he neglected to give me some facts and some information sometimes. So then I was kind of pretty lost. I needed to find other people, whereas if you use these guided lesson plans that come from the books, and I know a lot of people don't trust their books too much, but the new ones are wonderful. Uh, they cover all the important facts, and they, they somewhat cover them in order of importance, too. Then I take that one uh, and add it to to fit what I'm doing that time. And I don't know how it always seems to work out, but I always seem to have a car coming in or one that just went out that, that had this job that we're talking about or this, this area of, you know, the book that we're in. Uh, my students are all in different areas of the book also. You know, as, as they get older, some read better, some go faster, some get ahead. Uh, but I still do a bulk plan several times a week on subjects that maybe they're not up to yet and maybe they're ahead of, but the majority of them, by watching the POS and that, you, you know where the most of your students are. Um, it's great, you know, but some of this we have to do on an as-need-to-know basis. You know, we got jobs coming in that's not quite lined up with where we think we're at. I want that hands-on experience for my students, so I kind of have to sh twist that lesson plan a little bit to fit what I what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I'd also, if I can for a minute, I want Andy to talk a little bit about his reading program with his students and how he encourages and motivates his students to read their textbooks. Great. Okay. I I think I'm back. Okay, I do not assign homework. My students spend uh, 20 to 30 minutes daily, first thing, reading their textbook. And this is where I said students get ahead of others because they're better readers. I do this because I don't want their mom and dad or aunt and uncle doing their their questions at the end of the book. I want to make sure the students do them. I want to see what they do and don't understand. And if they have a problem or if they have a question, I want to answer it. In, like according to what I'm getting out of the book sometimes or whatever. Um, my students then, if they get their unit done and they have like two weeks to do each unit, get to read magazines. Um, you know, and, and they, you know, we stack them up. We get uh, lots of them. I probably have 12 or 14 different hot rods, antique car, restores, uh, circle track, all the stuff that the students are into here. Um, we use like max teaching plans to try and encourage them to read. You know, each paragraph, it's kind of weird, but my books are now starting to get marks in them. They put dots beside the paragraphs that they understand, 
them bring that other paragraph up to me and say, well, I understood this and this, but I don't understand here. Um, if these kids don't read, if these students aren't reading, you know, when they get to industry, the boss isn't going to read for them, and, and there's not, you can learn a lot by hands, but you, you need to know what you're, where you're heading, and reading to me is, is the first thing my students got to do. Last year as a group, my auto mechanic students were the top in this school at PSSA scores at the end of the year, which proves to me that reading, reading, reading helped them, and it's going to make them a better employee uh, once I get them out there. I think that's a great point, Andy. You know, the uh, research shows that sometimes the students in career tech ed courses, because they have to read more technical literature or technical manuals, and if they're encouraged or uh, required to read through their teacher and instructor, they do consistently better on state assessments on reading and, and comprehension. So you're right along with the research. One of the things we're looking at on the iPad is to put the textbook right on the iPad for them. Um, and although it's still the same reading, it's a little bit more exciting when you're reading it on the bus or you know, it's a little easier for them to do some extra reading on their own time uh, if they have it there, you know, kind of like they play games and we're hoping that they read more. Since this is interactive, and, I'm, I'm going to ask you one more question, Andy, on this, on, on vocabulary. But the rest of you, do any of you uh, do other things with reading? Do you also uh, require your students to read at the beginning of the class or have take-home reading? Other ways you get your students to comprehend it, you could use the question box to answer or you can raise your hand and we'll, we'll unmute your microphone. And as you're adding that in, Andy, do you do anything with vocabulary at all? Well, at the, at the end of the unit, the vocabulary is listed back there. I've taken that and made it um, already pre-printed all the words for each unit. And actually, my learning support uh, teacher does that for me. And then they just write a very short thing so that we know that they understand each word, not a detailed, um, and it's part of the homework assignment that goes with each and every unit or chapter, whatever you want to call it, along with the ASE questions. Uh, those seem, seem to be the most important, and uh, I think they can do the multiple choice. They just kind of, at worst, they got to guess at that, but ASE takes a little more thinking. Yeah, great. We have a comment from Leanne. Leanne, do you want to talk about uh, reading or vocabulary? Uh, hi, uh, this is Joe Posco from Fayette County CTI. Yeah. And um, about the reading and the vocabulary, I just started using the uh, CDX Heavy Vehicle. I'm a diesel mechanics instructor. And uh, what I've been doing is, uh, they were saying before, I've been going through uh, some of the uh, vocabulary words and at random and picking them out usually 15 to 20 at a time where the student has to go back through the uh, reading and finding. Uh, the definitions, and then I usually give an open notebook test if they uh, took the initiative to um, um, copy the notes. And also I found a lot of them either try to shortcut the process or try to wing it. So uh, it does make them read, and I have noticed the students uh, want to try to do a little bit better, you know, with the reading of vocabulary now. Fantastic. Uh, Jim Schumann also made a comment to us, uh, said that he uses Max Teaching. Uh, they have anticipation guides. They work good to encourage students to read. Uh, I don't know, Jim, do you have your audio that you want to elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, finally, I'm working here. Yeah. Uh, the anticipation guides work great for me. Um, it gives students something to look for. You, you put a few statements up there. You go through and you uh, you prove whether that statement is correct or incorrect, and it it encourages them to find the answer rather than just uh, drudge their way through the chapter. And you do it with them, and you make it more exciting. Um, also, I use a vocabulary worksheet with every single chapter that that we cover. That's great. Do you, some of you use word walls? Do you, Jim, do you use a word wall? I saw that in some of the information. Is that helpful to you? A word log? A word wall. I think it's uh, maybe vocabulary words up on 
the wall in the classroom? Um, no, not necessarily. Okay. All right. I know that several of you have gone through the Max Teaching uh, program. So, do you, others like the anticipation guides? I've heard good things about them, Jim. It sounds like you like it pretty well. Quite a few of the me, teachers in this school like it. Yeah. Let me see if I can unmute Ben. Ben Wenzel, can you can you comment on that? I don't know if I'm able to unmute you or not. It doesn't look like I am. Uh, we've got some comments from a few others. Uh, Pete Holland says, we also use CDX Automotive. It really does a great job tracking uh, a student's progress. And uh, Sam Rocco says, uh, Max teaching list vocabulary words of a unit from A to Z and then use those words. In, oh, and bingo. Wow, that's interesting. I don't know, Sam, do you have an audio mic that you can expand on that, how you use it with bingo? Hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah, it's actually something we just did at an in-service, and it, it, it was uh, from Max Teaching. It came off the anticipation, guys, but uh, kind of a good way to start a un unit, and I tried it. It worked really well, was to uh, ha give a blank with A to Z, and they have to, uh, you put them in groups, I put them in groups, and had them list words, and then they had to choose words to fill up a, a blank bingo grid and then you facilitate the definition so they can find the word and then play bingo with that and you know, gave out candy. It worked pretty well. I had them, had them pretty engaged. It was, that was fun. Sounds like a great idea. Very good. Thanks for sharing that. Any other ideas you all have for uh, vocabulary or reading or any other methods you're using in your classroom that are similar to what Andy was talking about or Marsha? You can add it either in the uh, question box or above. Um, Jeff, I don't know your last name, but they, you says we use, we use a, a KWL and Cornell notes for each of your chapters. That's very interesting. That's good. Is that Jeff Schmel? Is that right? Jeff, are you, can you, do you have a microphone you can talk about that? Yes. You want to elaborate on that? Yes. I don't, I don't know KWL. I know Cornell notes. What's KWL? The, the uh, KWL basically uh, is uh, what we do is we have uh, approximately 10 uh, terms and we also have uh, 10 true and false statements and before the students read the, uh, the chapter uh, they are to look over the terms and the true and false statements and make a decision do I know what the term is, uh, I don't know what it is or I am unsure and it just gives them a little uh, something to look forward to or look for as they read through the chapter. Uh, once they're done reading through the chapter, then we uh, go through the terms and uh, the true and false statements and uh, make sure that they, um, you know, found the correct answers and now know the right answers. And it's effective. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the KWL is basically, you know, what do I know, uh, what do I need to know, and then what have I learned. So it's like a before you read uh, and then after. That's right. I've seen that used in uh, project-based learning at some of the uh, uh, new tech schools as well. Very good. And, and Cornell Notes, do you want to expand on how you use those? Uh, yeah, the, the KWL basically covers uh, maybe 20 of the main bold headings in the chapter. And then any other uh, main bold heading that might be in the chapter but's not on the KWL, uh, we uh, put on the, the Cornell Notes, uh, which is the, the term would go on the left side of the Cornell note paper, and then on the right side uh, they would write a brief description as far as what the definition is. Fantastic. That's the Cornell note format. Very good. Thanks for sharing that, Jeff. Any other great comments way about how to study? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's great for reviewing information. Uh, Pete says our students are able to access CDX online uh, anytime, making it easier to give and follow up on assignments, which is excellent. I don't know. Uh, oh, we have a we, do we have a microphone for you, Pete. I don't see you on my list here. So, oh, there you are. I don't know. Can, can, yes. Can you talk a little bit more about that, Pete? Sure, can you hear me? Yeah. Well, we, we've been using CDX for, for uh, quite a few years, uh, but uh, they offer a new online subscription 
where all the students get their own access uh, username, password, and so forth. And they, um, <clears throat> we put assignments on what's called a calendar within the WINS website, and they can access that. We just we just tell them to uh, look at their calendar. They can uh, be at home or at the library or at work. I mean, anywhere in the classroom, they can go on uh, at, at their convenience and uh, notice what their assignment is, when the due dates are. And then uh, CDX does a beautiful job tracking uh, when they're on, uh, how long they were on for, and their, their grade on such things as quizzes, things like that. And, and the the nice thing about the CDX is, uh, they if they let's say they take a quiz, it immediately grades it for them, and then as they can go back through the quiz, it it tells them uh, reasons why they they got their questions wrong, so that they can, you know, uh, you know, adapt their answers for the for the final test or uh, evaluation that we we put them through. And uh, so far, it's been working out really well. The kids seem to. Uh, uh, enjoy it a little more because they can do it at their leisure and uh, they're more accustomed to doing everything online anymore so yeah. it's, uh, it's 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 really uh, accommodating to them you know <laughs> connects with their lines of thinking yeah well see I've been teaching 26 years and Bob what are you 20, 20, 20 21 years so we've been uh, for for this long we've been constantly trying to figure out how kids want to work and how they want to learn and uh, this is just the evolution process that we've been going yep. through for years you know <laughs> it is i think andy mentioned that too it's you you always try different things to try to right. connect we, to, we, uh, to, to up, up here in wilkesbury we 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 never think we know everything so we try to adapt our, our learning <laughs> and, uh, and teaching abilities here so great um, I appreciate all your comments, Andy. Do you want to? You and Marcia want to uh, say anything? Kind of as we wrap up this part of it, I'm going to just show a couple more slides, and then we're going to wrap up the the webinar. But what are your thoughts on uh, on some of the comments that have been made? Well, first, uh, a couple things there I've never even tried, so I think this is great. What happens when we do the webinar is that I get this new information as a as a senior teacher. Um, sometimes I fall out of the loop of this modern stuff. And it's easy for me to stay on what I used to do because it, you know, it always worked before. Um, iPads. When I first saw one, I thought this is no better than a, a laptop, but by far it's way better once you learn how to use one and 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 get this stuff in there. Um, I think that as a group, we still need to come up with a way that to track our students from school to school. When a student comes from your school to mine or whatever, uh, vice versa. There's an instant way, and rather we all use. You know, it sounds like everybody has something, but mine doesn't travel but with my student. I don't think, or, or I've surely not gotten any from any other students. And, and I just got three or four new students in the last couple of weeks, and none of them came with. This is what I can do already. Uh, they all just kind of came with that look on their face, like I'm lost, and my parents made me come to this school. I don't know if, if there's a way we can get that out there somehow, so we can well, follow uh, that around. I don't know, Jim. Jim, did you want to say something on that? Jim Schumann made a comment. Is that related to what Andy was saying? Well, I thought the program, the program of study, is designed to do just that, to allow for the same curriculum statewide. But how we're gonna? We need to find a way to follow it across to each other. Well, yeah. So when a student transfers, see what you mean. Yeah. So that. So has, you, excuse me. That has to be software um, driven. I I mean I have a printed one that my students should be able to bring. You know, like if they came to you, or whether they do that or not, I can't control. But um, I sure would like to have some way to find out. Like if you came from your school, can I come in and look at those? those tasks that they've completed so I have a general idea where this student's at. Not a bad my idea. Newest, my newest idea, I think, or thought. And, <laughs> it, it, it's this, Marsha, that's an administrative thing and um, I'm also a, a PACTA officer so that's something that I can bring up when we meet 
and, and we can talk about that on the administrative level too. Right, John? Great. Oh, I didn't unmute John. Let's see. Right, John? John John's, John's Yes, I wrote it down. <laughs> you can assume that John agrees. Good job. He agrees with all of that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> add, add to the task list. <laughs> um, Pete has a comment. He says, "I think logistics and automotive is a vast is a vast area and, and would be quite an undertaking." Um, so I, I think that you're doing some things with uh, with logistics. Pete, are you are you talking about just connecting it to automotive? And no, I, was it Andy that was speaking before? I I just thought, yeah. uh, you know what what. A lot of us would say would be it would be nice to be standardized across the state, you know, as uh, lesson plans were were developed, and maybe a good lesson plan could be distributed throughout, you know, the whole state. But but even even uh, regions within themselves have different, uh, you know, what I want to say is they have different conditions in which their automotive uh, request for you know, from employers may be different than than ours are. You know, we we live up in the uh, Pocono Mountains. There might be a little, you know, different uh, repairs that we do compared to down, uh, you know, close to uh, West Virginia or something, or, right. or down by Philadelphia. That's, I think, I think making it standardized throughout the state would would be a like I said, a huge undertaking, and uh, it'd be nice. But I don't know if that would ever yeah. happen. I don't think we can standardize it across the whole state, but it would be nice just if, as a student travels um, to know what they already have have accomplished before they get here. And yeah. That's just, I don't know. I think there's I a... Know that. Like there's I said, a, I think we can, we can do that, but also um, part of uh, the SAS website, um, it's my understanding that the goal there is to have common lesson plans that can be shared by all the teachers there so all the brunt doesn't fall on one teacher and then we're not reinventing the wheel so that is part of what the department would like to see us do is to have lesson plans to be shared uh, with throughout the state granted they're not all going to be the same everywhere but there's a lot of things that you do in common and to get those commonalities and have them on the SAS lesson uh, website so uh, I know we had at least one new teacher here. When he's uh, looking for ideas or what's going on, he can go to that that website and find um, find lesson plans that are already done, so he doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Marcia and Andy. Uh, great comments, great information. We we're going to talk about the SAS website. I don't know, Jennifer, if we have time today. Uh, but we certainly will go over it the next time and we'll show you where some of those lesson plans are. Um, I think that having some sort of common at least checklist with your POS task list does help make some commonality. Um, as a former school counselor and working with lots of school counselors, um, they, they get information that's different from every school, so they've learned some ways of uh, accommodating some local control but also some commonality among grades, courses, so I'll bet, I'll bet uh, you could do the same thing. So uh, I want to get back real quick to Kathleen or Kathy Houghton. Kathy uh, had talked about how do instructors like the automatic grading when taking online tests. And uh, just for uh, Kathleen, if, if I can unmute your mic, you want to uh, expand on that a little bit or you want to wait till our next uh, webinar? Kathy, I went ahead and took your am, am mic off mute. Yeah, you're on. All right, just so you know, I'm in an area that has a lot of background noise, so I apologize for that. Um, I just know that a lot of times when I give out tests, um, I like to see how the students are thinking, what their thought process is. And I hear a lot of teachers using these um, tests where it's automated, where it automatically grades them. And I'm really wondering how many times the instructor goes back and evaluates those tests to say, this is where I'm lacking. Or are they just taking those grades and putting them in the grade book and just keep on moving? So it's sort of a question for the group about how they use the online grading. Okay, good. Um, if anyone would like to comment on that, we can do that either through the question box or, or we can unmute your mic. Um, Kathleen, I'm going to go ahead and mute you there. Um,
we also are going to have some follow-up questions for all of you um, after today so that we can prepare for our next webinar. So we may want to just include that in the, uh, the question that we have for the next time. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back. I see no questions right now on that topic. Kathy, but we'll, again, mention that in the future. I'm going to turn it back here to Jennifer. I want to, again, thanks, uh, thank to Andy uh, Watt and also to, uh, to Marsha, uh, both at Jeff Tech, for providing their information today. It's been very helpful. Great discussion by all of you. Uh, Jennifer, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to um, show you all a couple next step slides, um, just talk about some of our upcoming um, activities that we have. I guess I have the SAS website showing too. So actually, why don't I just take a quick minute to, to talk about that while, while we have it up and, and sort of as a continuation of what we started discussing. Um, could I ask all of you who are still on, online with us, just raise your hand if you have um, a SAS account created. If you have created a, an account for yourself to be able to access the resources and information that, that's available on this SAS website that we're showing right now. Looks like we have quite a few. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so I, I would guess that some of you maybe were participants on last year's PLC because we did um, start to dive into um, this resource then. Um, but what we've created, and, and for those of you who don't yet have an account, um, I'd, I'd like to ask you to, to create one, and, and we'll send some follow-up. In our follow-up email from today's session, we'll send some instructions on, on how to do that. Um, but what we've, what we've done as, as a resource and as a um, sort of a tool for our PLC groups is to create a community site for each of our PLCs um, on this PDE SAS website. And I'm logged in right now. I'm just going to show you real briefly where that information is and how you can access it. And we'll, we can talk about this more specifically at a later date. But um, I've, I've logged into my account. And on the upper right-hand corner, um, there's an item that says Teacher Tools. So I'm going to click on that. It's asking me to enter my PPID, which I don't have, so I just click through that. And here's where um, there's an area called My Communities. I'll click on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is where, since I have um, membership in multiple PDE, BCTE, PLC communities, they will show up here. If you're not yet um, connected to our PLC group, for automotive technology, you can find it by entering into this um, search area um, keywords. I would suggest entering PDE BCTE and do a search because that's in the title of all of our groups. And it will bring up the list of all the various PLC groups. And here's where you can um, join. Them. So membership in the Automotive Technology PLC group is open to anyone who has a, um, has a SAS account. So if you have other automotive technology teachers or perhaps your math or um, literacy coaches would like to participate, please encourage them to, to join. It's, it's open and, and accessible to everybody. I'm going to, since I'm already a member, I'll go ahead and click on it and just show you real briefly what is available here. And, and we'll make more use of this as we get into our, our webinar sessions, um, but just to give you a brief overview of what's available here. You'll see we have the upcoming webinar dates um, for our group listed here, and this will also include the registration links so that you can sign up for the webinars. There's a forum, and right now we don't have any questions posted, but at some point we might um, post questions, or you certainly are welcome to post questions out there for your colleagues if you want to get input or find out how, how folks are handling a certain um, topic or, or certain um, area. 
And then also, at, as you scroll to the bottom, you'll see what they call the digital content repository. And this is where we've started posting various lessons and resources. Um, last year's group was great in sharing um, information that they had. And just one caveat, the, the resources and the lessons that are posted here are not necessarily in the um, official SAS lesson plan format. We haven't quite bridged that, um, bridged that gap yet, but what you will hopefully find here, and as you click on them just for an example, under electrical systems, is you'll see some examples and, and lesson plans that were submitted by participants of last year's PLC group. And we'll fill this out with the, you know, the other content areas for automotive technology, but just as a starting point, here's where you can, you can look to see if, if you're looking for ideas or examples of um, lessons or activities for the various areas um, that information is posted here. And we encourage you to um, look at those and, and also to, um, if you have information that you would like to share, you can send that to us and we can post it up here. So not to take too much time on that, but I did want to give you a quick overview of the PLC um, content and the community page. In terms of next steps, um, our next webinar, the date is scheduled for um, December 5th in the morning. And at that session, we will be focusing on math, integrating math into the curriculum. Um, Kathleen McNally, who is with the SREB and has been working with the TAP program um, and various math workshops will be joining us and she and I will be leading that session um, focusing on on math. And then um, Matt, I'm not sure you had suggested these as, as next steps. Um, did you want to ask folks to to do these in, in preparation for our next model lessons webinar, which will actually be in January? Sure. These are very simple. We just have a couple of pages from Pill handbook that we'll send to you uh, just goes over a little bit more on unit planning and lesson plans. Again, it may or may not be helpful to you, but it's uh, sometimes easier for some people to just read it instead of listening to a webinar. And then um, you may find some very interesting lessons, as Jennifer just showed you in the SAS website, SAS website. I was looking today and in several content areas found some really excellent lessons that are already there. So. Um, what between now and the next webinar, which is on December 5th, take a look at the SAS website. Okay. That's all I have, Jennifer. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you. Um, as, we're, as we're finishing up here, does anyone have any questions or comments for us um, in terms of, of the PLC or general questions about um, the, what we'll be doing over the next few months as a group? Any suggestions or recommendations? Feel free to enter those into the question box or raise your hand. Okay. Um, well, as always, we, we thank you for your participation. Please do feel free to be in touch with us um, in, in between sessions if you do have questions or, or comments. Um, I didn't put our email address up here, but I can um, recite it to you. It's P-A-P-L-C at meterconsulting.com. And the great thing about that is that comes both to Matt and myself. So between the two of us, we'll do our best to, to follow up and to field any questions that you have. Um, we certainly appreciate your participation on today's session, and we look forward to meeting with you again um, in early December. So with that, we'll close out today's session. Thank you very much, and please be on the lookout for a follow-up email with us, from us with those items that, that we mentioned today, um, the list of all the participants and the information from the PIL handbook, as well as some tips on um, accessing the SAS website and um, any other information that, that, we, that we can put together for you that we think might be helpful. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.